Levi's, the brand. They've been around for a minute. Well, 168 years worth of minutes to be exact. In that time, they have invented the whole riveted workwear thing. They've invented the blue jean. They have clad everyone from cowboys to miners to presidents to movies. In fact, they've clad pretty much everyone in jeans at one time or another. Along the way, they've had what, eight? 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, I mean, the, the Type 1 and the Type 3, they ran for 50 years. And actually, the Type 3 is, is still running and is showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. The rather predictably named Type 2, it only ran for 9 years, so less than a decade. But to be honest, that was just a Type 1 with an extra pocket. I mean, I suppose if it's not broke, don't fix it, but... Maybe put an extra pocket on it. But the vintage denim market in jeans and jackets has gone pretty nuts in the last couple of decades. And so it might well be worth your time to see if the old foosty jacket that grandpa's got hanging in the garage, just to see if that jacket's worth anything. I will add here, right now, that this isn't a definitive record. This video is intended to give pretty broad brush strokes so you can nail down what version of the jacket you have. Is it an authentic jacket? That's going to be important. And roughly how much it's going to be worth. The thing is, with, with doing a guide like this, there's, there's no definitive guide because there was no exact records kept. I don't think anybody back in 19 Canteen, when they were actually sewing these things together as pieces of workwear, I don't think anybody thought the geeks, denim geeks, would be geeking out over the tiny little variation, the small nuances that would really help us decide exactly when these, these pieces were from. So this will give you an outline, and then the, the links that I used, or the, the resources that I used, are linked down below in the description. So once you've watched this video, once you've got an idea of what you might have, then you can go down to those links down below, and there you're going to find much more information to narrow things down a little bit further. First off, let's see what we're dealing with. Is it a Type 1, a Type 2, or a Type 3? The Type 1 is the oldest, and therefore the rarest, and potentially, actually I'd say definitely the most valuable. But then the Type 2 it was made for less than decades, so there, there was just less of them. Anyway, the Type 1, it ran from 1905 to 1953, and in that time, Levi's made six distinct iterations of the Type 1. And the features that define a Type 1, there's a single chest pocket on the left-hand side, there's pleats running down the front, there's salvage detail running down the inside of the button plaquette, there is a cinch on the back, and there's rivets at the top of the pocket, and also on the cuff vents. When it was released in 1905, it was released as the 506XX blouse. This original issue had pleats running vertically down the front, it had the single chest pocket that was riveted up at the top at the stress points, much like their jeans, but there was no flap yet. Then there was no cinch at the back, that would come later. There were rivets also at the cuff fence, and it had the, the boxy shape that's associated with both the Type 1 and the Type 2. In 1917, the 506XX started to be referred to as the number 1. In 1928, along came the pocket flap, and therefore the second iteration of this Type 1 jacket. In 1936, Levi's introduced the red tab, and this was rolled out across the entire Levi's line. On the Type 1, it found its way onto the front pocket in a similar placement as you'd find on the back pocket of their jeans. Two years later, in 1938, the 506XX blouse started to be referred to as a jacket. It was referred to as a blouse before in their, their catalogues, their marketing materials, and for, for whatever reason, Levi's decided to pivot and start referring to this as a jacket. During World War II, 
Materials were pretty scarce, so they had to save on both the, the metal materials for the buttons and the rivets, and they also had to save the materials. The pocket flap was removed once again, and then they started using generic donut buttons. The donut buttons had the added advantage that they used less metal. These buttons were either completely plain buttons, or some of them had a laurel leaf design in them. The laurel leaf was meant to stand for, for peace, for unity, and for goodwill. In 1944, the cinch back was added, which is a, is a bit confusing for me because the rationing meant that they had to save in materials. The war was still going on, but the cinch back used more fabric, more denim, and it also used the buckle, so more metal. But either way, in 1944, along came the cinch back. In 1947, the pocket flap was added back on, and the Type 1 just remained that way up until 1953, when it was replaced by, predictably, the Type 2. If you do happen to have a Type 1, an original Type 1, kicking around in the attic, then it is worth a pretty penny. It could fetch anywhere from 1.5 to K up to 7 or 8,000 depending on the specific iteration it is and the condition that it's in. World War II versions, for example, they command a higher price than those from the 20s and 30s. They just, they're only made for a few years, so there's not so many of them, and so they're just rarer. This info will help you ballpark the date that your jacket comes from, and then the resources in the description below, that's gonna help you narrow down a bit further. But really, if you think you have an original one of these, then you'd be well served seeking out the advice of an expert. Okay, the Type 2, or the 507XX. It was produced from 1953 up to 1962, and it was an evolution of the Type 1. The pleats running down the front vertically, they remained, as did the boxy shape and there was a pocket added on the right hand side with a flap. Instead of reinforcing the top of the pockets with rivets, as was done in the Type 1, they used bar tacks instead, but the rivets did remain on the cuff fence. There was a leather patch added at the back of the neck with a two horse design. Later iterations, this leather patch was replaced by a card patch. There were iron buttons used that were silver in color, and the cinch back that was replaced by waist adjusters. Given the Type 1 run for less than a decade, there's no real significant changes that were made to the design. The biggest change would be the leather patch being replaced by a card patch that happened at some point during the 50s. If your jacket does have a leather patch, then it's going to be older and therefore worth a little bit more. And you're going to be looking at this being worth maybe one half two k up to possibly 3K for a genuine example in really, really good condition. And that is the trick here, a genuine example. It could be a repro, but we're gonna get into how to spot these a little bit later on. Last, but certainly not least, we've got the Type 3, which is probably one of the most iconic jacket designs of all time, and certainly the most iconic jacket design in the entire Levi's lineup. It's been running essentially the same for 50 plus years and does not show any sign of going anywhere. If the Type 2 was an evolution of the Type 1, then the Type 3 would be an entirely new species. The Type 3 was designed by Jack Lucier, and, as an interesting side note here, it was Jack's father, Chris Lucier, that came up with the genius notion of the red tab. Anyway, Jack threw away the pleats and the rivets, kept that red tab, of course, and then went on to create one of the most iconic, reproduced, straight-up copied pieces of clothing in human history. The design is characterized by these two pointed flaps on the chest pockets, that point towards the V seams that run down the front of the jacket. This creates a slim silhouette that was a big departure from the boxy fits of the Type 1 and the Type 2. And that means the Type 3 is flattering on just about anybody. And I think that this was part of the reason that it was catapulted to icon status. But I also think it was the timing. This was the time when denim items, denim garments, were shifting from being exclusively workwear to being part of the counterculture and by extension of that to being fashion items. And this shunning of the old and embracing the new that the Type 3 represented just by its, its new design and its abandonment of the way that things had been done before, this really resonated with the times. Since the Type 3 has been running for just so damn long, there have been a lot of changes over the years. But let's run through some of the most significant. The first Type 3s appeared in 1962. They had these two pointed flaps on the pockets. They had the V seams running down the front. They were quite cropped. They had waist adjusters on the back. They had no pockets 
and they had a big E-red tab. The first significant change came in 1971, when Levi's across all of the range decided to change the lettering on the red tab from being all capitalized to then only being the L capitalized. Levi's, for whatever reason, they wanted the Levi's name to be a name and not a brand. They thought capitalizing only the first letter was going to achieve this. Also in 1971, care labels started being introduced to all garments in the US, so the Levi's jackets had to also have these care labels. They were sewn onto the bottom of the patch, but if your jacket really is that old, then the chances are it doesn't have a patch or a care label. The thing is, the patches were made out of a type of cardboard, and as durable as that cardboard was, it was still just cardboard. It would crack, it would flake, and it would fall off, and it would take the care label with it. In the early 80s, the jacket got a little bit longer, and hand warmer pockets were added. And since then, it's remained pretty much the same. The iconic design has been reimagined in any number of, of denims, of other fabrics, leathers, by not only Levi's, but I think any other significant, actually, any other significant brand and a bunch of unsignificant ones, unsignificant? insignificant brands along the way as well. If you do have one of the earlier models, so that means no hand warmer pockets and a big E-red tab, then it could be worth anywhere between three to 500 bucks, depending on the condition of the jacket. Yeah, the Type 3s are just more modern. There was more of them made, so they're not commanding the higher prices of the Type 1 and 2. But they still are sought after by collectors, and good examples of them are becoming more and more rare. So the price is getting driven up a little bit. I will end this with a word of warning. And this is a warning for the guys who are in the market to buy one of these original jackets. Maybe not for the guys that are trying to date one that they already have. Beware of repros. These are reproduction models of these iconic jackets. So not fakes, not really. But there are guys out there that are trying to pass off these reproductions as the originals and they are demanding the, the price that these originals would command. It's the Levi's vintage clothing line where you're most likely to run into bother. The, the problem is that these reproductions were so good, especially the ones that were made in the US. They were made from white oak cones mill denim, they were sewn together in the States, they were very, very good quality. And so if you've got a, a worn in version from 10, 15 years ago, it can be quite difficult to tell the difference between that worn in version from LVC and one that's really from the 50s. But here are a few things to look out for. Just the general condition of the jacket. If the jacket is 60 or 70 years old, then it should look like it's 60 or 70 years old. Even if it's an amazing dead stock condition, which would be an incredible find, even if it isn't that great condition, it should show some signs of wear. It should look like it is six or seven decades old. Then have a good look out for care labels and labels of origin. The more modern repros, they will have full on libraries stating how to care best for the jacket, and where every one of the materials is from. They are usually located on the inside left-hand seam. People, like even myself included, they quite innocently remove these labels, but you can still see some evidence that there was something there. Check this carefully, and if you see any sign whatsoever, just don't pay top dollar for that piece. After you've checked the condition of the jacket and see if there's any care labels, have a look at the number stamp on the back of the buttons. If it's a three digit number, then that means that it's an LVC reproduction. Lastly, just be sensible about the piece you found in grandpa's attic or in the charity shop. If Gramps did live in a farm in the middle of Nevada, or the charity shop is in small town rural America, then yeah, there's a chance that, that is a genuine type too. My grandfather lived in the north of Scotland in a small town called Fort William. He wore tweed his entire life, and I would be very, very surprised if he ever owned a denim anything. And if I found a type one in a charity shop in Berlin, I would guess it would be a repro. And I guess it would be the repro that I lent to my ex and I never got back. Okay, those are the broad brushstrokes that will help you narrow down what you're working with. But like I said, through the entire history of Levi's denim jackets and through the, the history of the type one, two, and three, there are so many small nuanced details that would just be impossible to cover it in one go. Links to all of the resources that I used to put together this particular video, they are down in the description below. So once you've got an idea of what you're working with, you can head over there and you can, you can check out the details and you can narrow things down a little bit more. And yeah, when you're on your way down there to check out those links, then you're gonna be passing the like button, you're gonna be passing the subscribe button. If you have liked this video, if you think it's brought you something, then it'd be amazing if you give it one of those thumbs up. That really does help out the channel. 
If you're into denim, if you're into menswear, if you're into quality menswear, then consider hitting that subscribe button because that's what CRD is all about. If you have found something in your grandfather's attic or hanging in a barn somewhere, or if you've had a lucky find in a charity shop somewhere, I'd love to hear about what you found. Just hit me up in the DMs on Instagram or just leave a comment down below. I would really, I'd be super, super curious to hear about this. And guys, that just leaves me to say, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. I'm not 100% healthy right now, but I'm very happy about it. I got my second vaccine this morning, so I'm feeling a little bit meh, but in a couple of days, that's gonna be passed. In a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be fully covered. So yeah, I'm very, very happy about that. So yeah, hope everyone's happy and healthy. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. Hope you're taking care of each other, and we'll see you in the next video.